Mom was diagnosed with ALS, with Lou Gehrig's disease, four years ago. Um, it will be four years in January. And um, since then, she has steadily declined. That period of time has been an ordeal for Claire Barnett and her family. Since her mother, Anne, was diagnosed with ALS, they've witnessed a drastic change from her life before the disease. Before she got sick, she was the life of the party, and this disease completely robbed her of 99% of, of that. After a lifetime of relying on her mother for support, Claire found herself with the responsibility of becoming an around-the-clock caregiver, a role that proved to be more of a challenge than she thought at first. I was going to class full time. So I have a 14 year old sister and she was 11 or 12 at the time. And um, she was at school all during the day. And, and even if she had been home, I wouldn't want her staying with my mom by herself. So when mom got worse, we had to get a hospital bed. Those kind of changes started happening. Um, I decided that it would be better for us to have um, some help with a little bit more experience. Hi. Hi. Good. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you too. That's when Claire decided to enlist the aid of hospice volunteers, although the idea took some getting used to. I think the overriding perception of hospice, at least in my family, was that it was just um, a service that came in at the very end and it was very grim and solemn. And then when they came in, it, it doesn't feel like that at all. I mean, they are only positive. Everyone is so upbeat, friendly, loving, caring. Um, you know, the thought of imminent death doesn't even come into the picture. Hospice volunteers fill a vital role for families in need at a most critical time. When a family first has to start dealing with this, it is so overwhelming. And if you can be there and be a part of helping them to be able to cope with the situation, um, it means a lot to everybody involved. It makes a great deal of difference because it gives people a little bit of control over their lives. And when you're very ill, you don't have any control over your life. The volunteers show support in a number of ways including doing little things we all take for granted, such as writing letters and reading the newspaper. Schilling's gritty efforts help socks take command. And exercising not only a patient's mind, but body and spirit as well. Also not to be overlooked is the measure of freedom returned to the primary caregivers. When volunteers come in, I, I either go to work or go to the grocery store, go to Target, you don't realize how long little things like that take. So knowing that when I leave her with a volunteer from hospice is, is very reassuring. I can go to work and think about work. And, um, and I can go to the store and, and do what I need to do and not worry how she is and not worry that she's not being taken care of. The path to becoming a hospice volunteer starts here with a training session that lasts about a day and a half. Nurses, chaplains, and other specialists teach the volunteers how to care not only for patients' physical needs, but for their emotional and spiritual needs as well. All of us are working together to come up with a plan of care to keep that patient comfortable, okay? In training sessions, volunteers develop a wealth of new skills, such as communicating with terminally ill patients, understanding issues of nutrition and diet, pain control and body mechanics, and it also affords them the opportunity to voice their questions and concerns. They're concerned about what might happen in an emergency. What is our responsibility? They also get a chance to hear from veteran volunteers who share their knowledge and experiences with the group. Experiences that volunteers like Bonnie and Doty wouldn't trade for anything. A feeling that I contributed something to help someone else and to make their life easier. And it has brought that sense to me. I've gotten a lot more than I've put in. I don't know how to tell you other than that, except that it, it's such a good feeling to have somebody get a little bit of control over their life and be able to do things that they're really pleased about that they couldn't do if you didn't help them. For the volunteers and the patients, it's something more than just home care. 
I think mom has developed a special relationship with them. I feel like they enjoy being around mom. She is very upbeat and positive, even though she is going through devastating circumstances. And for them to, to be around her and to see that, I think it's uplifting. For Smart Medicine, I'm Rod Starnes. Joining me now is Sandra Livesay, Hospice Volunteer Coordinator. Sandra, thanks so much for joining us. Glad to be here. Tell me some of the things that a hospice volunteer might do. We have volunteers that uh, uh, can help provide transportation, pick up people from the airport, uh, uh, take people to the uh, doctor's offices. We have volunteers that pick up medication, take it to our patients' homes. Volunteers uh, can also help with our uh, bereavement support program. They may call family members, uh, the survivors, and talk to them to see how they're doing. Uh, we have uh, volunteers that help with our camp uh, good grief programs. Uh, also volunteers that help with our uh, memorial garden at the Memphis Botanic Gardens. Uh, we have a garden there uh, that uh, uh, volunteers weed and, and uh, plant flowers and, and, and keep it maintained. Tell me about how much time is involved in volunteering. That's very flexible. Uh, it all depends. Uh, at times uh, you may be there for an hour. Uh, other times you may be there for five or six hours, depending on, on what's needed. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.